Okay, in this video we're going to do some slightly more difficult examples with um, properties of exponents. Uh, this is the kind of last page that I was on in the last video that I made, so if you didn't watch that video you might want to go back and watch it, or you could just take a look at these, see what I did, maybe pause the video. Um, we're going to move on to uh, the next example. So these are going to be a little more complicated. There's only two of them. Um, so here I have, uh, what do I have? I have a product to a power over a product to a power. So um, kind of a lot going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, deal with the numerator by itself, then I'm just going to deal with the denominator by itself, and uh, then I will start combining things. So just the numerator, um, power to a power. The denominator is just power to a power. Um, and so we have this. So um, now just to make sure, uh, you know, we have x to the third times y to the fourth, all raised to the third, so that's really x to the third to the third times y to the fourth to the third, which is where power to a power came in, uh, which is why we're multiplying. So let's clean this up. And now what I have is uh, x to the ninth over x to the eighth. Notice there's no addition or subtraction in this problem. If addition and subtraction show up, the problem is much more complicated. But if you're only dealing with multiplication and only dealing with division, the rules of exponents can be applied uh, really quickly, and you can kind of fly through these problems once you really know what you're doing. So um, same base dividing, I'm going to subtract the exponents. So 9 minus 8, y to the 12 minus negative 20. Um, and so overall, I'm getting x to the first times y to the 32nd. And um, the x to the first, it's really it's optional to write the, the 1. In fact, no one really does it. Uh, I just did it here because I'm kind of showing all my work. So really, uh, you would write that as x times y to the 32nd. OK, let's do one more example, and this one's a little bigger. So here we have. Uh, a lot of quotients to a lot of powers, um, and then also um, overall it's a quotient. So here we go. I am just going to work on the numerator first, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of like think my way through this with you. So just the numerator. So overall I have, um, I see x cubed to the second. So x cubed to the second power to a power, that's x to the sixth. Then I see y to the fourth to the second, that's a power to a power, so that's going to give me y to the eighth. I see z to the negative 3 um, to the second, which is z to the negative 6, but that's sitting in a denominator, so I'm going to bring it up as z to the positive 6. So this is where knowing all the rules starts to really benefit you. Um, so I'm going to talk my way through the next one, uh, the next uh, kind of quotient, the thing to the fourth. So I have x to the negative fifth raised to the fourth is x to the negative 20th. z cubed to the fourth is z to the 12th, because I multiply. Then I have uh, y to the 5th to the 4th, so that's y to the 20th, but that's in the denominator, so I'm going to move it up as y to the negative 20th, and then I've taken care of everything in the numerator of the giant fraction. So I'm going to make uh, the division bar. Now I'm just going to deal with the first part of this denominator. So I see x squared, but that's in a quantity that's to the negative 1st, so x squared to the negative 1st is x to the negative 2, but that's inside a quantity that's squared, so it's going to be x to the negative 2 to the second, which is x to the negative fourth. Now I have y to the negative first, which is y to the negative first, um, squared. So y to the negative first squared is y to the negative second. I have z to the negative 3 squared, which is z to the negative 6, but it's in a denominator, so I'm going to move it up as z to the positive 6. Um, I see y to the negative fifth to the negative third, which is going to be y to the fifteenth, z to the fourth to the negative third, which is going to be z to the negative twelve, and I have x to the fifth to the negative third is x to the negative fifteenth, but that's in a denominator, so I'm going to move it up as x to the positive fifteenth. So now I have this numerator, which has lots of x's, y's, and z's. I have a denominator with lots of x's, y's, and z's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up just the numerator, clean up just the denominator. So in this case, I have x to the 6th and x to the negative 20th. They're being multiplied, so I add the exponents, which gives me x to the negative 14th. I have y to the 8th and y to the negative 20th. I add the exponents and get y to the negative 12th. z to the 6th z to the 12th. I add the exponents, I get z to the 18th. That's just the numerator. Now, let's work on just the denominator. I have x to the negative 4th, uh, x to the 15th, so x to the 11th. I have y to the negative 2nd, y to the 15th. Add the exponents, I get y to the 13th. z to the 6th, z to the negative 12th overall, z to the negative 6th. 
Now, I have um, just a quotient. So I have x to the negative 14th over x to the 11th. What I'm supposed to do is subtract the exponents because I'm dividing with the same bases. So that's going to give me x to the negative 25. y to the negative 12th over y to the 13th is y to the negative 12 minus 13, y to the negative 25. And then z to the 18th over z to the negative 6 is z to the 18 minus negative 6, or z to the 24th. And then you want to write your answer as a, a single fraction with only positive exponents. So um, we have an x to the negative 25th, a y to the negative 25th. In the numerator, with negative exponents, I'm going to move those to the denominator with positive exponents. Get z to the 24th over x to the 25th times y to the 25th. So just to kind of summarize how I did this problem, because these problems are like, um, they're not really hard, I guess. But uh, there's so many numerators and denominators that uh, the way that I approach them, I think, is kind of the best way to approach them. So the first step is I aim for one numerator and one denominator. So I don't care that it started with all these. I'm going to rewrite it, and that might mean using negative exponents, and I don't really care about that. The next thing I do is clean up just the numerator, then I clean up just the denominator, and then finally I finish the problem. Okay, so that's uh, two examples of using properties of exponents that are maybe a little more complicated. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.